Hello, seniors. It's been a while, and I'm glad to see you all again. Another journey is yet to overcome. Let's step ahead in learning another exciting area of science that concerned with the study of inanimate natural objects, including physics, chemistry, astronomy, and related subjects. Students, it's time to learn physical science. Our lesson today is the loss of physics. At the end of this module, you should be able to compare and contrast the Aristotelian and Galilean concepts of vertical motion, horizontal motion, and projectile motion. Explain how Galileo inferred that objects in vacuum fall with uniform acceleration and that force is not necessary to sustain horizontal motion. And explain the subtle distinction between Newton's first law of motion or law of inertia and Galileo's assertion that force is not necessary to sustain horizontal motion. Let's start our discussion in the concept of motion. A lot of physics can be observed in daily activities. Motion occurs all around you. It refers to a change in the position of any mass with respect to time. It's easy to recognize but hard to describe. A motion has held the attention of scientists and philosophers since ancient times, and the motion of objects has been studied since ancient times. Let us take a look at the past for a thorough understanding of the motion concepts at the present. Aristotle thought that heavy objects fall faster than light objects in proportion to their weight. Galileo argued that the motion of a falling body should be nearly dependent on its weight and should have constant acceleration through careful measurements of distances and time experiments. Several physical quantities help describe the motion of objects. Here are some of them. Distance, the length of the part traveled from starting point to final point. This working equation and its S a unit is meter or m. Displacement, with this symbol, is the length of the part traveled from the starting point to the final point with consideration to the direction. The arrow in the symbol indicates direction. Speed is the rate at which distance is covered and can be obtained by this formula or equation. Speed equals distance over time interval in meter per second. Moreover, we have velocity, which is the displacement in a given time interval. Its equation would be velocity equals displacement over time interval and is expressed in meter per second. Acceleration is the measure of how fast the velocity changes with respect to time can be obtained by using this equation. Acceleration equals change of velocity over time interval in meter per second squared. Aristotle and Galileo were two of the most important historical figures that laid the foundation of motion concepts. Their views regarding motion may be opposite, but both help the progress of science. Let's take a look at Aristotle versus Galileo's concept of motion. For horizontal motion, according to Aristotelian concept, force is required to maintain horizontal motion. All moving bodies naturally come to rest, while for Galileo, objects moving in a straight line at a constant speed requires no force to keep them moving. It will continue in motion due to inertia unless an external force acts on them. For the vertical motion, Aristotle believes that freefall is a natural motion occurring due to the tendency of nature to establish balance to bring disturbing elements to its natural resting place. 
Second, heavier objects have more earthly elements than lighter ones, hence they should fall faster and will take a shorter time to reach the ground. And warmer bodies have access to fiery elements, hence they ascend faster. For Galileo, objects move downward because gravity disturbs their motion. The rate of fall or acceleration of an object is independent of its mass, and the motion of falling objects is uniformly accelerated. For the projectile motion, for Aristotelian concept, the motion of a projectile is parallel to the ground until it is the object's time to fall back into the ground. For Galileo, a projectile moves two-dimensional motion in a parabolic path. The horizontal motion component has zero acceleration or the constant speed horizontally and vertical acceleration is constant. Free fall is when a body in vertical motion where only gravity is acting on it. It could be an object thrown upward or the positive initial velocity thrown downward or negative initial velocity or dropped, zero initial velocity. Projectile, on the other hand, is a body or a particle in two-dimensional motion given an initial velocity and it moves along a curved path under the influence of gravity alone. In recent times, the motion of falling bodies have been studied with great precision. When air resistance can be neglected, all bodies experience equal acceleration regardless of their size and weight. This constant acceleration, or g, is called the acceleration due to gravity. The standard value of g at or near the Earth's surface is approximately 9.8 meter per second squared. Let's now study the uniform acceleration. Galileo was interested in the behavior of falling objects. He knew that as falling objects go down, they increase their speed as they go down. This change in speed is acceleration. Although he did not have any tool to measure this change, so he used inclined planes to reduce the acceleration of the moving bodies. He was then able to take a close look at the moving bodies carefully. With his experiments, Galileo proved that regardless of their masses and air resistance, two objects dropped simultaneously will reach the ground at the same time. He also discovered that objects fall with uniform acceleration. Again, acceleration is the change in speed. So, what is uniform or constant acceleration? For Galileo, constant acceleration means moving with increasing velocity evenly proportionate to time. The following graph shows the comparison between the motion of objects with constant velocity and objects with constant acceleration. Positive velocity indicates that the object moves toward the positive direction. Negative velocity indicates that the object moves toward the negative direction. Positive acceleration indicates that the object is speeding up. And positive or the negative uh, acceleration indicates that the object is slowing down. In one of his experiments on the inclined plane, Galileo was able to gather the data as shown in the table. After every second, a ball rolling down an inclined plane increases its speed by the same value. He then observed the following. Acceleration of the rolling ball increases as the inclined plane becomes steeper. When the inclined plane was positioned vertically, the rolling ball has maximum acceleration. To have a constant velocity, an object must have a constant speed in a constant direction. 
if an object maintains a constant or a uniform change in its velocity in a given time interval along a straight line, then it is said to have a constant acceleration. While Aristotle believed that forces are necessary to keep objects in motion, Galileus believed otherwise, although a force is needed to start an object moving, Galileo believed that force was not necessary to sustain motion and did this experiment. Galileo rolled balls down inclined planes and observed and recorded the gain in speed as the rolling continued. On downward sloping planes, the force of gravity increases a ball's speed, while on upward slope, the force of gravity decreases the ball's speed. If smoother planes were used, the ball rolled up the opposite plane closer to the initial height. The difference between initial and final heights was because of friction. He postulated the ball would reach the same height if friction could be terminated or eliminated. With regards to the ball rolling on a level surface, it neither slows down nor speeds up. It maintains a constant speed. Galileo reasoned that the ball would move forever if it is in horizontal motion. If friction were absent once it is moving, no force is needed to keep it moving except for the force needed to overcome friction. A moving object needs no force to keep it moving. When friction is absent, such a ball would remain in motion all by itself of its inertia. Moving on, let's have the cause of motion. For many years, the accepted opinion was Aristotle's concept that moving objects would stop because the natural state of objects was to be at rest. However, as for Galileo, once the ball is in motion, no force is needed to keep it moving except for the force needed to overcome friction. Friction is an opposing external force that prevents its continued motion. A moving object needs no force to keep it moving when friction is absent. It will remain in motion all by itself. All objects tend to resist changes in motion. This means they all have inertia. Inertia is the property of an object that resists changes in its motion. Sir Isaac Newton made a great revolution in the growth of science primarily in physics with this famous loss of motion. He built these concepts on Galileo's concept of inertia. He established a new set of ideas with his three laws of motion that includes the first law of motion, more popularly known as the law of inertia. It states that an object at rest remains at rest, and then an object in motion remains in motion in a straight line with a constant speed unless an external force acts on it. This means that things tend to keep on moving what they are already doing. Notebooks on top of the table are in a rest state. They tend to stay at rest even when you quickly snap the tablecloth or paper underneath. If you slide the coin along the road, the coin soon comes to rest. If you let it slide along a frictionless surface, such as an ice rink, it continuously moves. A moving object tends to move in a straight line indefinitely in the absence of a force. So the object's resisting changes in its state motion depends upon its mass. The more mass the object has, the greater is the tendency to resist the changes in motion. That's the end of our lesson today. It's been my pleasure teaching you one of the amazing topics of physical science and I really hope you learned something from this video lesson. Thank you and may God bless us all. Let's meet again in our next video.